to the south wind, the king of summer, volcanic rex, gets the extra strength he needs to throw winter out of town. And on the good counsel of the queen, the royal family steps aside. The Vulcans take over and bring spring and summer into a city. Well, Brent and I come from uh, Aquitennial, so we're, we, we lean a little towards south wind uh, Vulcans by right. the end of the week. Brent, why don't you talk, tell us a little bit over there what's going on? Well, we have Aurora, Queen of the Snows in 2018, joining the, uh, the demon. She's the, really, she's the star of this whole thing. Sorry, boys. But, uh, Julie, <laughs> Julie, can you tell us a little bit about what the Queen of the Snows does? Well, Queen of the Snows has the most important role. We make sure that Winter Carnival happens every single year by letting Boreas take a break and come back again next year. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hold your applause. <laughs> um, we also are... King Boreas, the Prime, and the Queen are the leadership for the royal family, and we travel throughout the United States and Canada and to little towns throughout Minnesota, spreading the good cheer of St. Paul, the best capital of any state in the United States. Little towns like Minneapolis. Oh, I don't know. You're on the right side of the river. Let's just forget about that. So, uh, you know, don't forget our niece is the only good <laughs> Jill, you have an interesting history that, that led you to become a queen of the snows. Why don't you talk a little bit about yourself? Yes, I'm actually a transplant. I was born in Paris, France. Moved here when I was five years old. Fell in love with the state and the city, and so glad that I got to represent it in 2018. And uh, what's, uh, so why don't you hear a little bit about the other princesses that join you as you go to these different communities? Oh, yes. We have a tribe of five ladies. We have the queen. We also have the north wind princess that wears blue. We have the East Wind Princess that wears purple, the West Wind Princess, the Cowboy Princess, which is in green, and then we have our South Wind Princess who wears red. All right. And can you tell all the little girls out there that might want to one day do this, how do you go about becoming involved in some of these different communities? Well, first, get to know your community. If you love it, then you should step up your plate and try and represent it. Uh, for Queen of Snows and for the Princesses, it's a three-month candidacy program where we go to different towns, we get a little experience of what it would be like to be part of the royal court, and we have professional interviews. And once selected, you are queen or princess for a full year, not just for winter carnival. And fun folks, all of these positions are voluntary. Everybody comes up, steps up to the plate, they fund themselves, they do a lot of work on behalf of their community, and they're a big part of what makes places like St. Paul so much fun to live in. I, while I was from Minneapolis, Dr. Centio, I'm actually a resident of St. Paul. Uh, it is my preferred side river. And I was born in St. Paul, and uh, my memories are of Winter Carnival as a child, not Aquatennial, so. That's how we end up back here and we've been uh, doing this, I think, for 10 years now. The... Uh, so there's a lot of great events today. Obviously, this one's probably the best because we're here, right? Right. The uh, how many is this and year? They're all here. Well, yeah. how many are perennial parade goers here? Do we have a lot of people come every parade? We get some excited folks. Us? Yeah. The uh, we we're sorry we can't see you folks. <laughs> how how many first time parade? I think I see some down here. <laughs> there Ooh, we welcome. go. Well, welcome. It's a lot of fun. Parades are great. Uh, if you you enjoy this parade. There's another parade next Saturday. Uh, next Saturday is Tuesday. So it's the Torch Pride Parade. It's a lot of fun. It's really pretty. Uh, last night we had the Royal Coronation where we took the uh, new queen, all the new queens and princesses and gave the new boys. You're going to meet them today in the parade. We have uh, the, the outdoor beer uh, dabbler festival, kids' day, snow sculpting, uh, ice sculpting, carving is behind us. The Klondike Cape, they'll be in the parade, and they have uh, they'll be, uh, uh, yeah, the cavalry, right? Yeah. For those of you who this is your first time, you're in for a treat when the Klondike Cape comes today. But here's uh, some great new events for those of you who have been coming for many years. We have the uh, Hops and Hounds, where tomorrow you can bring uh, bring your dog and from, choose from a selection of craft beers and rice tarts. Sergeant Trung, the uh, St. Paul Police Department therapy dog will be here. Oh, and we're going to have two Minnesota Olympians coming. The curling gold medalist Tyler George and Paralympian swimming gold medalist Mallory Wegman will be promoting the Tokyo Summer Olympics that is happening this year. And the Olympic torch will actually be here passing through, so make sure to get a photo of that, please. Thanks, Jill. And there's been, uh, you spent a little bit too much time out here. There's the Bailey's Warming House, and you can uh, choose your own adventure inside of there, but for sure you can get warm. Uh, and then there's a new event called the Drag Queen Bingo, where you can have kids winnings with the Drag Queen. I, I am absolutely going to win. How's that? I, I think it might be dressed appropriately. <laughs> the, uh, it's, it's, uh, the Drag Queen event has a $20 entrance fee, and uh, for that, you get an ex access to an expensive dessert bar. Tequila-based uh, sparkling water and music by 
DJ Stevie Ray. Quite frankly, I am curious as to what tequila based water is. Yeah, the tequila part sounds pretty good. The, uh, get the, pack, the package to play bingo are separate, and if you haven't figured out by now, this is the result of it. So we've got a lot of great uh, sponsors for uh, Aqua Tenio. We're going to move to Winter Carnival. Oh, yeah, we have a lot more for Winter Carnival. <laughs> so they, uh, some of them are uh, ones that will be in the parade today. Fire Kevin, uh, KSTP will be in the parade. Uh, they're a great, uh, a great uh, sponsor. Uh, they are a medium uh, sponsor. No, but they are the media something. They're larger. Yes, they are. So, I don't know, some of these others, we've got uh, the, the Bailey's, obviously, are doing this. Uh, Bradshaw. If you have too much fun, you visit Bradshaw. <laughs> University of Minnesota Physicians. Kind of like well, we're trying to cover the full spectrum of life. Yeah. We've got Therapy Coffee, U.S. Food, Sonic the Hedgehog, School 108, and Food Band. So it's just a great, great community support for, uh, for this. Well, you know, tell us a little bit about the, what comprises the Royal Family. You, you get part of it. You mentioned a little bit of it about it. What, you know, you said, what's the key to it? So, back in 1886, when, when the legend first came about, uh, there was a uh, prince of each one of the women, and they were all brothers to King Boreas. And then King Boreas decided that, one, he should have a queen, and then the king prince should have a princess. And the legend revolves around that. And so you have the north wind, who is Titan, the east wind, who is Euros, the west wind, who is Zephyrus, and the south wind, who's Notos. And those are all princes of the winds, and they all represent the north, the east, the west, and the south side of the city. So if you see the north wind, he is likely from Rice Street, and the east wind is likely from Payne Arcade, and the west wind is from somewhere other than here, and the south wind's from South St. Paul, the center of the universe. Now we're going to see uh, each of those organizations represented. One of the things I've admired about the St. Paul Winter Carnival is the fraternal organizations that form. So we've got for Boreas, it's what, Star Boreas, and we've got West Wind, South Wind, East Wind. They all do a lot of volunteer work through the years, and you're, you're far from finished, even though you were king two years ago, right? This is all fun and this is all play, but what it is, it's, it's making each one of our areas of the city stronger, and it's building the community up one piece at a time. Well, Brent talked a little bit about the volunteers. Volunteerism is a huge part of uh, Winter Carnival. All the people you'll see working here today are volunteering. The, uh, if, you, if you've ever been a, haven't been a volunteer, we strongly suggest you consider it. And you know, you both do a lot of volunteering, we all do. And you gain, volunteering, you gain more than you give. There's just no questions about it. One of the things that we've watched in Winter Carnival and Brent and I every year, we start considering starting uh, Festivalmaps.com. There are so many marriages that come out of Winter Carnival every year. It's, it's unbelievable. But the reason for that is because it's a lot of great people, it's a safe place to be, and you have a lot of fun. So it's, uh, it's it really is. The different areas of the city started in downtown St. Paul, the, the Carnival did, because it was the melting pot of St. Paul. It was to bring the different ethnic communities together. And that was the origin of St. Paul, was to bring the citizens together. And there it just happened. And this, so Joe, we, we were talking about this earlier. This is a, you know, we have a statewide group of festivals. You see a bunch of them today. We also have nationwide festivals. This thing, the, the St. Paul Winter Carnival Startup, and even international festivals. Can you talk a little bit about your interactions with those two? Yeah, because St. Paul Winter Carnival uh, has such a legacy, we invite visiting dignitaries from all around the state and also from around the world. We have the Winter Palace visiting dignitaries here. They're going to be on the float. We had actually the pleasure of going to Winter Palace and seeing their wonderful festival. Um, we have Bob Nick in Georgia at their Cherry Blossom Festival where everything is in pink, including the portal parties. Uh, and also Burlington, Florida, who is also part of the Historical Society representing the pirates and the first landing on the Mary side. And yep. just a whole bunch of fun groups getting together. And we visit each other, they visit us, and we bring a lot of business out there throughout the city. Why don't you tell a little bit, you know, you know Tom talked about how you, how you get to be a, a king, one of the wins. It's really by being a volunteer, a civic, really civically involved, you get invited to do that. Now, getting to be a queen or a princess is a little different process. 
Right. So there is a pool of candidates that decides to run for royalty as the women of the group. Um, you go through a three-month candidacy period where you have to go through several interviews, you visit senior facilities, you visit schools, you have judges, and um, it's just about how well you know St. Paul, how much you want to give back, and if you have the time commitment for it. Because again, it's not just for Winter Carnival, you are royalty for an entire year. And one of the women that, that you know, we don't talk about quite as much, but is pretty entertaining, is our friend by Kate. Can you talk about what her job is in this, uh, in this world? Oh, she brings merriment to our sport. So by the King of Boreas, she'll sing songs throughout the city. And she also has a really long candidacy period as well, where she has several auditions. And um, she, she just brings the extra fun to our family. They are talented and entertaining women. I promise you, you will enjoy them. So, so tell us, well, you as the mistress of merriment. Yes. Can you tell us about your nemesis? Oh, uh, Volcano Carnival? Press, yes. Another brother of Boreas, and he was not the one that liked winter. He liked summer. And so the, the battle of St. Paul Winter Carnival is the battle of winter versus summer. So when you see those fiery guys in red, they are meant to bring the heat, and their names are Count Embryo, and their names are, the, oh, excuse me, the, the, the uh, Count Embryo and the Count of Ashes, and it's the very red so they all have hot names, and they're all part of the part of the heat of summer. Now we won't get to know who they are until the uh, next uh, Saturday night when they attempt to overthrow Boreas. Now we're we're kind of wondering, you know, they're they're due to win. They have only Boreas has only been overthrown, I think, 103 times. Well, they're getting a little cocky. Yeah, they, <laughs> they say they're 133 and all, and they expect to be 134 and all. Well, really, there's not a defeat. There's a step aside. I'm the good counsel of the queen. The king steps aside, along with the royal family, to fight another day. That was a very political decision. Yeah. So now, now they're claiming 133 because we were here a couple of years ago celebrating the 100. Right, <laughs> right, a couple of years ago. Yeah. So anyway, the, uh, but that's a lot of fun. If you haven't been to the uh, Torchlight Parade to see the, uh, the parade, really pretty. It's fun. Lots of fire, lots of lights. Uh, Rice Park at night is absolutely gorgeous. Everything around downtown St. Paul is uh, fabulous that, that evening. And uh, as the flames come through and the Vulcans Vol come through, uh, we recommend your book. And we also reenact the overthrow, which I think is fabulous. Yeah. It's very historical. It is, it is. So that's a lot of fun. So there's a lot for you to do this week, and we really encourage you to to take part in it all. Uh, if, if you haven't been through the park, take a, take a walk through the park. There's all kinds of food opportunities and lots of things to look at, uh, lots of entertainment. The uh, I think the, the, the bar, I don't know, have you been in the bar this year? I, I have been in the bar. It's uh, the Daily Warming House. That's the place to go warm up. It's pretty fancy this year. It is. It is. An ice bar, right? All right, well, folks, we are getting ready to have a parade. Is everybody ready for a parade? Can you see the flag? They're coming. So this first group is the uh, American Legion that's uh, bringing the flag. And uh, that's, a, that's a big, big group. They have a current membership of over 2.5 million wartime veterans, the largest veterans organization in the United States. Isn't that amazing? Amazing. They've been around a long time. These Legionnaires, they work for the, uh, the betterment of their communities with more than uh, 14,000 posts across the nation. They've been with us every year, and uh, they've been the, uh, the start of the parade every year. So it's good to see those coming. You know, as, as we go through our nightly parade of the royal family, we get to see the American Legion a lot. And it sure is just, it is representative of great parade to start with our American flag. I think it's good too for us. We take a lot for granted in this country, and these folks will kind of remind us that uh, a heavy price is paid for what we have. The, uh, so they'll be here in a few seconds. So are you all ready for them? Is everybody warm today? Yeah. yeah. It's a great, great day, isn't it, for them? 
This came out here when it's still cold, the water froze in front of us. So yeah, the, uh, last year, I think it was 10 below yeah, last year. Yeah, yeah. This 35 uh, degrees today. And, and, and a, we, a fun fact of the ice palace, when it was 15 degrees below zero, we were raising awareness for people without proper winter clothing. And we had three members of our royal family that slept outside on the ice palace. If I do remember, the hot chocolate froze into a solid ice block. Yep, it was uh, practical. Yeah. Now, I, I don't want to be critical, but we didn't see a lot of you people last year. <laughs> I don't know where you were. It was more sparsely attended. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> we want you to come back, so we're glad to see you this year. Good call. for the American Legion, everyone. All right. Welcome. So after the event today, we encourage you all to go over to the St. Paul Hotel. You get hot chocolate, coffee, brownies, cookies, everything you want. It's a lot of fun there. Welcome, American Legion. It's great to have you again this year. Welcome. 14,000 posts. So they've already finished the parade. <laughs> Bruce, our mother, thank you for joining us. St. Paul Police Band looking good. The St. Paul Police Band is an organization built on tradition, public relations, and musicianship. It was founded in 1923. Welcome. Here we have the Winter Carnival banner and the Winter Carnival snowflake. Each snowflake weighs 10 pounds. The St. Francis ambassadors are carrying snowflakes with their crowns and sashes. Each one of those snowflakes looks just a little unique and different. I'm looking for our friend Warren to see if he's here. He I know he does. Yeah. The snowflakes have been for many years. Here we have our, uh, our Mayor of Melbourne, Carter. Welcome, Mayor. Fun fact about Mayor Melvin Carter, he also was a junior royal for the St. Paul Winter Carnival. Well, he's a fourth-generation St. Paul resident. He's a public school graduate, former council member, father, and he's um, the mayor, obviously. Lives in St. Paul's Rondo neighborhood with his wife and three of their five children. The St. Paul story began a century ago when his grandparents came here fleeing racial violence in Paris, Texas. He's the son of a police officer and a teacher. He later became a county commissioner, both of whom instilled in him the value of community and public service. Now we have the St. Paul City Council who are riding on this fire uh, fire vehicle. We have Guy Tao, Rebecca Necker, Chris Colbert, Misha Jalali, and uh, Amy Brindeman, who is the council president, uh, Nelsie Yang, and Jane Prince. Welcome. Well, folks, here comes the St. Paul Fire Department. This is, uh, they operate 15 fire stations located without, throughout the city in three districts oh, under the command of three district chiefs and a deputy chief for each shift. They operate uh, 15 engine companies, seven ladder companies, three rescue squad companies, 15 paramedic ambulances, one arson unit, and a numerous special support and reserve units. So this is a big deal. The, uh, uh, there are three super medic companies in the St. Paul Fire Department as well. Right behind the minibus, we also have Captain Kent's 1923 Orange Fox Antique Fire Engine. It served the St. Paul Fire Department between 1923 to 1954. Well, in front of us right now, we have the Pioneer Press. It looks like they might be handing some stuff out, so kids, you may want to get a hand out there. Well, here comes one of our favorite uh, Spider Credit Union, Dan Stoltz. Uh, oh, Dan's probably watching this. Yeah. Yes. The Spider Credit Union, it's a not for profit financial corporation. It was founded in the Twin Cities, uh, co ops credit union in 1934. Spider is headquartered in Falcon Heights and currently serves 93,000 members and controls more than $900 million in uh, assets. They're also, as I mentioned earlier, a sponsor of the uh, 
Fire and Dan are good friends of the Winter Challenge. Right? Our bonus Dan's favorite quote is, you're awesome. So we're all awesome here. All right, here comes another one of our sponsors, the uh, Channel 5 KSTP, the 5, 6, and 10 o'clock news. We have Paul Folger. Paul has uh, covered an EF5 tornado in 2013 that devastated Oklahoma City suburbs. Some of you may remember that. He traveled with the news to support of the space shuttle launch, and he was in uh, rescue support. The, uh, he also traveled with World War II visits, uh, vets to visit a memorial in D.C., and he won a mayoral award in 2009 for blizzard coverage. Riding with Paul is Jackie Kane, and uh, she had her most memorable story was the discovery of CTE and uh, the, uh, the, football players? Yeah, the football players. And if you guys remember the movie Concussion with Will Smith, uh, Jackie actually was uh, made an appearance in that film, and as I think many of you know, that, that film and those, that discovery has entirely changed the way we discuss head injuries, brain injuries, and, and in all contexts, and particularly in sports. Well, the impact of that's been unbelievable. It's been a change in uh, many rules, a change yeah. in how helmets are made, uh, a scary change in discovering that a lot of the brain injury happens no matter what you put on the outside, it's what's happening on the inside. Well, it's important they do that, and they go and have this concussion protocol, and uh, it's, uh, the Probably the biggest story in sports in the last 20 years. It also explains what happened to my generation when we played sports without helmets. <laughs> did you play sports without helmets? No, I did not. I played hockey. I didn't have a hockey helmet until I was in high school. Well, that's a lot of fun. I, I, I think. <laughs> living proof. Living proof. That's so cool that they're from Minnesota and that they could be here to celebrate Winter Carnival. And they came with us uh, from uh, Channel 5, KSTP, the Eyewitness News. The Upper Midwest first commercial television station. It's owned by pioneering broadcasting co company, Covered Broadcasting. Lo local people, yep. which is also a local company, that actually is right on the division line between St. Paul and Minneapolis. I think, if I, did, I, if I remember, the line goes through the station. Yeah, I think it, it's, it's one of the very few spots in St. Paul that's on the west side of the river. They are literally a Twin Cities company. They first signed on the air on April 27th, 1948, and today they remain the only locally owned and locally operated broadcasting company in the Twin Cities. So the other thing you can go look at, folks, too, if you have time, and since it's such beautiful weather, is we, we suggest you go up to the fairgrounds. Now, you were up there last year and seen some of the snow sculptures and uh, what goes on there, right? Yeah, the snow park is amazing. You have a slide, a jump slide out there, and you've got all the... The Vulcans put on the snow park, and they do a really terrific job out there. They have the snow sculptures, and they are working for weeks before and then getting the, the ground prepped out there. If you have not been out to the state fairgrounds, I'd recommend you go out there and see the snow sculptures because there's only so many places in America that you can see something like that. And I don't know a better place than St. Paul, Minnesota. Now, that's a family event, right? That is a fa family event, event made for all, and it's fun for us. Now that's great. So that's, you know, trying to distinguish the different things. Do you want to talk about Bailey's again? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you want to talk about the snow park a little bit more, they have made sculptures that some of them have been 50 feet long and 15 feet high. So they get pretty intricate. And the talent and the, the ability to get out there and just see what they're going to produce with a big blob of snow and what they come up with is really impressive. We're lucky we had a lot of snow this year to be able to do that. And, you know, in Napa Valley, what they do is they do a grain stomping to produce some of these lines. Well, what we do in Minnesota is we do snow stomping. So two weeks before Winter Carnival, we fill up these boxes, and people can come and volunteer and stomp some snow to make some big ice blocks. And then what they use to carve those great snow sculptures. And one of the things to remember about Winter Carnival is to volunteer organizations. And everyone is welcome. If you have any kind of inkling that you'd like to get involved, all you have to do is reach out to the St. Paul Winter Carnival office, and you can be some part of it, too. And there are many, many jobs. If you are not comfortable public speaking, that should not deter you from doing this. There are, it takes a ton of work to put on a program like this. I believe 500 volunteers. Yeah. And it's a great, it's a great social event. You know, you, you tend to think of volunteering as being hard work, which, of course, there's a lot of work in this, but it's all fun. I mean, it is all fun. If you have a pair of boots and you have a pair of snow pants, you can go stomp snow. If you have some talents that are for organization, we need you too. 
So, Joe, you were talking about Canada earlier They have a big snow park, too, don't they? Oh, they do. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Um, they have huge sculptures, and people from all around the world come to take photographs of those. They also send in people from all around the world and do a huge snow sculpture competition. They can sell frames for I didn't even know that they had snow in Brazil, so they would have known that is. Um, and China and Japan, just enormous things. But my favorite snow sculptures, they're at the snow park. So check it out. Stay fair. So what else? They serve uh, a liquid, I remember, in Canada that was a little unusual. What's that called? Caribou. Caribou. It's awful. It's a wine that is quite uh, uh, super It'll keep you very warm, let's put it that way. Yeah, they serve, enjoy those cold winter nights. They serve it in ice glasses. So that's a very unique experience and uh, a lot of fun. Yeah, their, their festival is based off the fur trade, and that was the relationship between Winnipeg and St. Paul. And they've had snowmobile races between St. Paul and Winnipeg, and they, it is based off the old fur trading route, because if you get there by water, taking the Mississippi to the Minnesota to the Red River. So there was a water route from Winnipeg to St. Paul that was taken advantage of by the fur trade. Now, they're here this year, right? Uh, they are here. The festival yeah. is always here. The, the president and his wife and their, their children. They serve the tournament two years. When you see them, say, hey, ho! So right now, I want you out there. Why don't you welcome the visiting ambassadors? Now, you've met, you've got to meet all these folks. Why don't you tell us a little bit about them? There's about 90 ambassadors here from Minnesota, all towns, and uh, that will get down. These women are representatives for their cities and for their festivals. Lots of them actually get scholarships to go on to college and become leaders in our great state. Say hi to them and wave to them. They are uh, just uh, bring a lot of fun and energy at every parade that we're at. And we will actually end up visiting those small towns or bigger towns and being their parades as well. So welcome, ladies. They, these folks, uh, they do a lot of volunteerism as well. They go uh, to all the different communities. Uh, they serve as ambassadors to their communities. Uh, well, most of them serve a year. And then after they're finished, uh, the teams from the various communities or whoever they select can, will become candidates to be the Queen of the Lakes of the Aquatennial. And then many of them, when they get a little older, come over to St. Paul and become candidates for Winter Carnival Rally. Right? So they're all, they're all welcome in St. Paul. Yeah, Give them a wave, are. everybody. They enjoy a good wave. Actually, our current queen, Curtin Knudsen, was a, a princess or a queen for our Santee right there. Hi, Santee. <laughs> All right, then coming up behind them, we have uh, a new truck entry in this. We have a new king this year, Darren uh, Johnson. Darren was a guard in 1993, Prince of the Northwind in 96, and captain of the guard in 2006. So he's a big proponent of the guard. In fact, he's got so much power now, he, he has two guard trucks this year. The first one is actually Darren, and uh, it's the first time I think it's been in this parade. So. Hail the guard and hail Boris. Welcome. Hail Boris. All right, everyone. Thank this you. is the flow everyone's waiting for right here. So when they come by and we talk about Boris, let's all say hail Boris. Make him have a great entrance into his city. And Tom, why don't you start telling us about this royal family that's coming up? So the, this royal family is on uh, the St. Paul Winter Carnival Royal Family Float. It's a float that's been made for St. Paul Winter Carnival. And the king is up on top with the queen. And the Prime Minister will be sitting in front of them with Fondue cake and all the wind princes and princesses. So we have Darren Johnson is on top. Darren, let's see your uh, candidates. Kristen Nor uh, Knudsen, Joe Johnston. Joe's a longtime Winter Carnival and Aquatennial guy. Joe is as tied into festivals as anyone alive. The, uh, and then uh, we have, uh, let's see, who else is on here? Do we have the Queen? Oh, we, no, have, we the have the, we have Titan, Michael Sawyer. Zero, Stan Weinberger, Zephyrus, Stan Mor uh, Moran, Noto, Ben Johnson, and we have the North Wind Princess, Kiara Gowan, the East Wind Princess, Allie Vogel, the West Wind Princess, Carol Wood-Tunick, and the South Wind Princess, uh, Princess, Lene Boat. Now the guard, you see the guard walking around. The guard's job is to protect Boreas and to stop Vulcan from overthrowing Boreas. In spite of 103 losses, we still respect the guard. Yeah, hail the guard. The guards are there to protect Boreas from the Balkans and keep the royal family safe. Uh, congratulations, everyone. Hail Darren, Boris. welcome. Hail the royal Boris. family. Hail the queen. All right, everybody. Hail, yell, hail Boreas. 
It would not be Winter Carnival without the Klondike Group. And we have, now we have the Boreas Group. So all these guys have been kings of their own royal family, and they're out celebrating us today. We have the Young Irish Kitty, Kitty Harry, Hanson, Whitewater Rocker. You have all the rest of the kings in their case and representing the city of St. Paul. They're singing stools. We talked about Spider-Man. They're singing stools. You're awesome. You're awesome. And I'm Paul Zook, who is next to Brian Harrell, which is the former queen of snow. We also have queens up in the Wilkin Barrier. The organizers, mentors, and contributors to the Winter Carnival. Hello, Brian. 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 Hello, Brian.
are the South St. Paul Poetry Days royalty and then the Rowe Heights royalty. And I believe it's a new bus, so let's welcome this bus to its first parade of the season. And we also have Becca Moose 2019, Princess of the Southwind. Welcome as a husband, Becca. Now, walking, walking with the Southwind are the, is the historic society from Hernando de Soto. So you see our fine Becca from, from Bradenton, Florida, with their Queen and Princess. The Padres here, the Hernandos here, you know, the and, Cousins uh, are here. On Wednesday, their temperature was the same as ours. <laughs> yeah, I think they're enjoying their time. They bring, they bring in snowmobiles. They've made snow angels. They've got fish through ice hole. Uh, this is a fun event too. You know, I, I love the story of what this this event 
it came about because they used to bring all the cattle to uh, New Brighton to uh, fatten them up before they brought them into St. Paul to be slaughtered. And this is celebrating that. We've got yeah, their right, ambassador. Right, 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 right. Behind that, we have the St. Paul Powder Puff Clown Club. The Powder Clown Club is an all-volunteer nonprofit organization founded in 1967. They are based on the belief that everyone should have a reason to smile, if just for a moment. Their goal is to spread joy and healing laughter. You can contact them about coming to one of your events or to find out how you can become a clown and be part of, part of the Powder Puff Clown And they are Club. celebrating one of their own. Oh, is that right? I didn't Darren, know Darren was a clown. Well, that's, that's good to know. Darren is an interesting guy. Very dynamic. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of diversity in the show. Well, I didn't know. You know, he runs paintball. He, run, he runs flatbed out in, uh, in Hudson. And he also is, uh, he and his wife are the founder of Dreadwood, the Halloween class. Oh, really? <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> and then he's the, been the uh, photographer for... Uh, uh, winter Carnival. If many of you may have seen online the beautiful picture of Bryce Park. That was Darren's job using one of his drones uh, to get a picture. Uh, and he's, many of the pictures you see on the uh, website for Winter Carnival are from Darren. Well, he's a, he's a, he's a king of St. Paul, and he's, he's done so many roles, and he, he keeps it in front of the people. And if, he's, if there's something going on, he usually has something to do with it. But he's pretty quiet and unassuming. <laughs> so it's going to be interesting because most kings are like you. <laughs> well, he, he, he has a dynamic uh, prime minister that yes, a lot he of does. Does. they yes, will he bring does. the fun yes, merriment to St. Paul. Yeah, Joe, Johnson, uh, Joe Johnson is very active in uh, Acatenio as well. Joe's been a guard. Has Joe been a wind? I don't know. No, he was not a wind. He was a guard. He was an uh, Aquatennial yeah, uh, captain. Yep, he's you know, so he's, he's, he's an Aquatennial president yeah. several times. Yeah. His sister, uh, who was an Aquatennial parade many times, uh, was a princess of the South. Oh, very good. He was affectionately known as the Oh, yeah. yeah. So well, they, they do a lot of uh, uh, emceeing at. Uh, I was going to say, it's like emceeing more yeah. coronations. Yeah. Yeah. I've done some coronations, but Joe's got the corner on it, and I do not want to compete. All right, we have the United States Postal Service coming with us. I learned some great things about them this year. They deliver. They're not in debt. They're not losing money. They don't cost the taxpayers any money. They've always been self-sustaining. They're the largest employer of veterans. They employ over 500,000 people, and they are explicitly authorized by the Constitution. We take, uh, we take getting the mail uh, for granted. If you live in Italy, it's optional. Oh, if you live in Ecuador, you don't get mail. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, we, we're really spoiled and really used to it. I didn't know for the Postal Service. I painfully don't get that. That makes things a clear mailman or mailwoman. And they've all also been responsible for putting away public enemy number one many times because the way they get most people is through mail fraud. <laughs> and there's nothing like candy to make you more popular. <laughs> All right. Let's get the kids out of the street, though. Up next, we have the North Hudson Pepper Fest. The king and queen and princesses from the village of North Hudson are honored to attend King Glorious's Grand Day Parade. In North Hudson, they celebrate the community's strong Italian heritage. The festival was originally put on by a group of neighbors to raise funds to build an elementary school. The money's raised are still donated locally every year. The three-day festival still continues and is filled with many fun events, including uh, a parade, bands, and numerous food and eating contests. And when you go to Hudson and you eat their peppers, uh, you have to be ready for that adventure because they can steam the shoes right off of you. Yeah, yeah. 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 North Hudson always brings a fun element to St. Paul. There's been members of the St. Paul uh, Winter Carnival Royal Family from North Hudson, and there are a lot of community servants there. You can join them August 21st to 23rd. This uh, next up next for us right here, we have the Hill X Nose. They've been marching since the 1940s, one of my favorite 
participants in the Grand Day Parade. Uh, the gnomes are on loan from Westcott Station Antiques, the keep of the of the gnomes. And so this is the Boy Scout Troop uh, 13? Boy Scout Troop All 13, right. yep. That's great. Hylex gnomes, welcome back. Power legs since 1946. Some of my earliest memories are watching the Hylex gnomes walk through St. Paul. I've yeah. seen so many beautiful photos of them in there, yeah. Well, here we have the U.S. Army uh, Army Reserve, the U.S. Army Reserve Association. Welcome and thank you all for your service. Let's hear it for the U.S. Army Reserve. Thank you. We can be got historic military vehicles from the U.S. Army Reserve Association and the Battlefield Historic uh, History Team. Folks, you got to understand the reserve is a misnomer these days. Many, I bet you all of you have been on active duty recently. The reserves have been called up regularly, and they are the uh, backbone of the United States Army today. I would have to say that one of the pleasures as a royal family, Tom, was when we actually went to go to a deployment, and we were able to say thank you to the families oh, and to those great. that were serving. Yes. That's and great. I believe that was the 134th Red Bulls. It was. It's something that I'll carry in my, in my heart forever. So these are these. Now you're a car guy. These are original Jeeps. So these are classic Willie Jeeps, uh, U.S. Army, uh, probably 1945. I uh, drove a Willie's Jeep once. The uh, the, the uh, clutch in a Willie's Jeep is a little harder than what I was used to. Well, they they made it through everything, but they were not the easiest to drive. But they are fantastic vehicles of, of American service. All right, and now we have St. Michael's Royalty Program. St. Michael's Royalty Program is only a few years old, but thank you for making time to come to Winter Carnival. On the court, we have Little Miss, Junior Commodore, Princess, and Queen. Our Northland Princess, Elizabeth Byrne Marsh, uh, teaches up at St. Michael. Hello, St. Michael! The shop is back, West St. Paul. Is this the, uh, is this one of the uh, two silver bottles? Is, is this the bottle P? All right. So you're part of the club that's focused on the preservation. It's open to anyone with an interest in bottle P's. Then we have the commemor uh, Commemorative Air Force, the Minnesota Wing. The Commemorative Air Force uh, was formed in 1971 to honor the contributions of our servicemen and women to the nation's history and to preserve that history for future generations. The Hanging Room Museum are open to the public Wednesdays and Saturdays from 10 to 4. Admission is free. You have the opportunity to get close to this rare collection of military aircraft, ground vehicles, and other artifacts from World War I. Uh, to Korea and the Vietnam eras. A living history flight experience can be purchased in the gift shop. Up next, we have <laughs> Cottage Grove <laughs> Strawberry Fest, representing the strawberries with those red mittens. The Cottage Grove Raspberry Fest is also a scholarship program, and it's open to girls from ages 8 to 22. Our ambassadors this year are Christina, Little Miss Princess, Giselle, Miss Queen, Marin, Little Miss Queen, Sophia, Junior Miss Queen, Sydney, Miss Princess, and Juliana, Junior Miss Princess. Welcome! I like to coordinate the dance. She was bouncing. Well, you know what? I think maybe I should try it this year. Well, you can't think of the St. Paul Winter Carnival without thinking of the St. Paul Bouncing Team. This is a high flying winter carnival tradition that's looking for help. So, with the St. Paul Bouncing Team, is inspired by Eskimo hunting tradition called blanket toss. Thank <laughs> you. 
only organization of its kind in the world. Something to be proud of, St. Paul. We have a volunteer here that Queen wants to jump. <laughs> I couldn't get to the shirt. I missed it. Ah, there she goes. Two, three. Oh. Yeah, you could do that. I wouldn't do it. I, I could. I could. I've been thinking about trying it. Hey, uh, I had the uh, pleasure of, of experiencing the up uh, cycle. <laughs> did you do that? I did that. Did you yeah. do the backflip or anything? I did not do the backflip. I, uh, I, did, I did flip off, though. Tom, <laughs> you look like a scramble bag afterwards. Uh, hey, you know, as long as I was in the kitchen. Well, here comes the Feet Jesse Games Days. Thank you. Northfield, that's a fun event. I bet you look at that. Yeah. Now, this is. Northfield is very proud of this. It is not the Jesse James celebration. It is the defeat of Jesse James celebration. I, I, I stand for yes, come to witness that failed robbery attempt by James Younger. And and did fail. If no one, if you haven't been to Northfield for the defeat of Jesse James celebration, that reenactment down there is very impressive. Yeah. And how it happened and how the citizens of Northfield defeated Jesse James. So, hats off to Northfield. They also have a rodeo, two arts and craft fairs, a car show, carnival, and a soapbox derby parade. So now we have the uh, St. Paul Regional Labor Federation. This uh, federation unites more than 55,000 union members in Ramsey, Washington, Dakota, Chicago counties, and the East Metro area. Uh, although the work that the union members do has changed throughout the years, their commitment to improve our community is consistent. Greater Twin Cities United Way and Organized Labor have partnered for over 60 years to make our community a better place to live, work, and retire. So welcome. This is a group that joins us pretty much every year. Good to see you again. Waterama. This festival is placed on the beautiful shores of Lake Minnewaska. The royalty, we've got Admiral Dan, Dan, Queen Ava, Princess Madison and Savannah, and Junior Queen Sydney. They invite you to celebrate with them July 26th to the 28th. Again, folks, we want to remind you that uh, we're getting towards the end of the parade. There's a lot more to do. Make sure you visit Rice Park today. Uh, plenty of opportunities for food and drink. Uh, there's, I think there's entertainment, too. Is there, uh, in there, there's events at Landmark Center. Right after this, you can go into the St. Paul Hotel. It's a lot of fun. They have hot chocolate, uh, water. They have uh, Rice Krispie bars, cookies, brownies. Uh, and little kids putting the whipped cream in your hot chocolate, which looks like a real win-win. The -win. Hotel is set up for a concert tonight that everyone's welcome to. Julie talked about it earlier. Rock the Palace. We also at the Landmark Center have some historical photographs and more information about Winter Carnival and its start in 1886. Looks like we have some of the stuff Thank you for your service. Great to see you. Give it up for Farmington Royal Ambassadors. These ambassadors gain poise, speaking ability, and interviewing techniques. We have with us today Miss Ambassadors Gwen, Katie, and Selena, Junior Ambassadors Gabby and Lottie, and Little Ambassador Bethany. Behind them, we have Minnesota Krampus. Minnesota Krampus is a tradition very similar to St. Nicholas. And their nickname is the Pig Eye Pass for the great city of St. Paul, Minnesota. The Holy St. Nicholas is joined by his faithful alpine farmer assistant in search of good boys and good girls, and his Krampus is in search of naughty boys and girls. 
Well, St. Paul was founded by a guy named Pigs Out Front, and he had an outpost along the Mississippi, and St. Paul used to be called Pigs Eye. Pigs Eye Landing. Pigs Eye Landing. I don't know, though. Those Krampuses look pretty scary. I'll tell you, this, uh, this is an incentive to be a good kid. My son just watched this movie, Krampus. Did he? Yeah, he did this. Yeah, he really actually really enjoyed it. Did he really? <laughs> I think they're kind of scary. Hard to scare my six-year-old. Be good this year. You don't want Krampus visiting you. They do have a good looking truck, though. Minnewaska and Starbuck Heritage Day is coming here. And Starbuck Heritage Day's 2020 celebration will be from July 1st to the 5th. Go join them up in Starbuck. Heard they have great coffee there. <laughs> so I, I've actually been to Heritage Day. Starbuck is an absolutely beautiful place. It is a fun, fun uh, event. How many Starbucks do they have in Starbuck? Coming up behind them are our friends from La Crosse, Wisconsin, Oktoberfest USA. Great to see them back. They're uh, the fest this year is September 24th through the 27th. Let's see, who do we have with us this year? Looks like we have, is the fest master with us? It's, it's hard to go wrong with the festival based on the beer. <laughs> that is true. They, they, they have their kickoff with the tapping of a golden cap. So, so Terry, Terry Colgill. There he is, Terry. Welcome. Welcome. We've got, uh, Shelly Calgaro. We've got Gerald uh, uh, Claude. Welcome, welcome, guys. Good to have you back. This is a great celebration. If you it could be 40 above. It could be 100 above. It could be 30 below. And it will be here in the winter season. If you've ever wanted to go to Oktoberfest, skip Germany and go to La Crosse. Welcome to University Club. University Club is a private social and recreational club. It's, on a, it's a legendary piece of local history, having played host to Who's Who List of St. Paul Lights for more than a century. Absolutely beautiful location, sitting up on the hill. If you've never been there, there's great views, great food, and great camaraderie. And generations of Twin City has always said, I'll see you at the club. Well, next, folks, we have the Oswich Shrine, and I'll tell you, we... There's a long list of possibilities they brought with them today. So they started in 1886, the same year as Winter Carnival. They are the longest continuous running shrine circus in America. Performances are at the Lee and Rose Warner Coliseum at the Minnesota State Fairgrounds, March 28th through the 31st. Locally, they, they support the Shriners Healthcare for Children. 
Twin Cities that provide high quality medical care to all children regardless of the family's ability to pay. Their clinic specializes in treating children with orthopedic conditions in an environment designed to put children at ease. They support 22 side hospitals for children with, uh, which provide specialized care for the orthopedic condition for spur, uh, billings, spinal cord injuries, cleft lip, and palate issues. Now, just some of the things that Shriners have for different parades, they have the drum and boom and the bugle corps. That's in existence since 1921. They have the cycle corps. Uh, I think it looks like we have some of them back there. We'll see as they come up. Or those might be the mighty mites. I, uh, those little mighty mites, they get paid. When you see them, you can hear them, and here they come. They're up to 30 miles an hour, and uh, don't worry about them. The, uh, Sure. How are you? Good to see you guys. So, so some of the other, the, uh, the cycle cores are precision drill team made up of Shrine Masons. Uh, they're always looking for new members if anyone's interested. The Mighty Mites, they have two 32 Ford Street Rods, four 36 Ford Cabriolets. They have three Micro Cup cars, like you see in a NASCAR event. There's uh, the 2008, they got first place in showmanship category at the Midwest Shrine Association meeting. They, uh, they do figure eights. We'll see them coming up soon here. They do figure eights, leapfrogs, circles, crisscrosses, and more. They will go more than 30 miles an hour in a straightaway. And again, folks, they do all of this to raise money to help provide services to children in need. They, do, they provide all the services free of charge. A very important group. Why don't we give it up for the Shriners? Well, folks, again, make sure you enjoy all the other options at the uh, Winter Carnival. Uh, Rice Park behind us, there's a tremendous uh, number of things to do. Great food, ice sculptures. Get up to the fairgrounds, see the uh, snow carving and many of the activities for the kids. Are you going to bring your dog down and uh, go into the, uh, have a craft beer with your dog? Hops and hounds. I'm looking forward to it. All right. And then Bingo. We have a whole new version of Bingo coming up here. Drag Queen Bingo. It's going to be at the Landmark Center on Wednesday. Yes, you heard me right. Drag Queen Bingo is coming up Wednesday at the Landmark Center right here. And if you can't tell by the day, this is a class event. They uh, feature uh, very uh, luscious uh, desserts and uh, tequila spring water, and, uh, which we don't know what that is. Fun fact about me that you don't know, I'm killer at bingo. So I'm excited to see what the grand prize will be. There's some pretty big bingo prizes, too, from what I understand. What is your secret, though? Do you use a dauber or cord? <laughs> Some of the royalty that comes in and visits us is from San Antonio, Wild Wild West in Riverton, uh, Hernando de Soto, Macon, Georgia, the Cherry Blossom Photo, or folks, Aqua Daniel, the South Dakota Snow Queens, uh, Springtime in Tallahassee, Come See Me, South Carolina, and our friends from the uh, Voyager Festival in Manitoba. We saw them all today. And did you guys have a good time? So this was a great parade, wasn't it? Who got some candy? Whoa, look at these tricks. All right, thank you. Now let's hear it for the Shriners. Well, folks, thanks for joining us today at the St. Paul Winter Carnival Queen Gloria's Grand Day Parade. Be sure to join
join us next week, Saturday, February 1st at 5.30 for the Torchlight Parade. We'll be over on the steps of the library announcing and enjoy the rest of the uh, 131st, 34th Winter Carnival, the coolest celebration on Earth. On Earth. Happy Winter Carnival. Happy Winter Carnival. Happy Carnival. <laughs>